I discuss with ChatGPT to understand if it is capable of producing a software architecture. I also asked if it thinks it will replace me in the future. The answer is that it might happen. You don't believe me? Watch the video. ChatGPT is a autonomous language model built by OpenAI which is capable of complex dialogue. It can entertain long conversations on a subject, admit its mistake, challenge incorrect premises and reject inappropriate requests. But can it be a software architect at its job? Let's ask. Are you able to design a software system? It answers that it is not able to create or design software, however, it can provide guidance and assistance. It also immediately proposes some approaches, such as object-oriented design. I continue asking for a comparison between microservices and monolith. This is a very common question during interviews for a position of software architect. Its answer is impeccable. It is complete and well balanced by pointing out pros and cons of each approach. I want to check bias at this stage, so I ask which approach it prefers between the two. The model states that it has no personal preferences or bias and builds up a bit more on the comparison between microservices and monolith. By this time, I was already impressed with ChatGPT because it managed the comparison between two concepts. It also stated that it has no bias, which is something software architects struggle with. At times, we choose a solution just because of personal preference, not because it's the best tool for the job. Next step, I asked something more concrete. I had several interactions asking for software architecture diagrams for different systems such as Nisho, Flight Booking, and even an infrastructure as a service provider, which is my specialty. The result left me speechless on most occasions. At times the model gave some poor answers, but through follow-up questions, it is often capable of improving its solution. In the example of the infrastructure as a service provider, it initially produced a rough high-level diagram. But when asked to mention all microservices necessary to implement that system, it surprised me. It went into a greater level of detail, listing eight applications, including those managing the physical and virtual resources, as well as those dealing with more generic concerns like billing, monitoring, and authentication. What do you think? I think it did a great job till now. Next item, I wanted to take the technological step. I asked which technologies we could use knowing that we have mostly Java experience. What can I say? Another perfect answer from the model, which proposes Java E, Spring Boot, Quarkus or Micronaut. I also asked to add Kubernetes in the mix. And ChatGPT reworked the initial system diagram to include Kubernetes, while giving a detailed explanation of each component as usual. I will show you the last bit of this technical conversation because it is the one that consolidated in my mind that ChatGPT is able to propose valid options for a software architecture. In this section, we start talking about databases. After giving some parameters like expected number of users in the system, ChatGPT proposes some databases and I opt for MongoDB. Next, I ask a topology. And to my surprise, the model selects the very same solution I had in mind, using sharding. This is something I actually proposed myself in the past in a similar scenario. It does not end here. Since this topology is a bit complex, I challenge a GPT and ask for something simpler. The model is able to rework its proposal and suggests this here to use replica sets. This is exactly what I would do myself in the same scenario. At this point, I understood why there is so much hype about ChatGPT. So I decided to discuss ethics with the model. In particular, I asked the model if it thinks it will replace me in the future. ChatGPT states that it does not have the ability to replace or make anyone redundant. However, it highlights that it is up to individuals and organization to decide how they use this technology. Later on in the discussion, it also tells me 
It is true that technology has the potential to be misused, and there have been instances in the past where it has been used in ways that had negative consequences for individuals or society. And then it stresses again the fact that it is up to individuals and organizations to decide how they want to use technology. Well, what's the bottom line? I don't like to override things, but we cannot deny that chat GPT and similar technologies will change the way we work in the software industry. In this case, the model was able to help me deliver an initial software architecture with just few questions. The very same task would have been much more complicated if I had to rely exclusively on my knowledge or possibly use search engines or books. It might not be yet at that stage where it can replace me or any other human, but can we guarantee it won't happen in the future? There are also some controversial aspects that I want to mention. The first is that the programmers have introduced some filters that prevent ChatGPT from helping you in performing illegal, criminal or harmful activities. The only fact that the filter is there, it is a proof that there is potential for the model to help a malicious sector. And that is worrying. Right now, we're relying on the developers and creators to prevent the scenarios from happening. Some group of researchers, according to some rumors on the internet, have actually been able to circumvent these checks and they got the model to help them in some harmful activity. However, I cannot confirm this because whenever I tried to exploit the system myself, I was never able to do it. It becomes even more complex if we talk about ethics and legislation, which usually trails behind technology, but I want to leave these considerations for you. Now it's your turn. What do you think about it? You can leave comments in the section below. And as usual, I keep saying that this is the beginning of my YouTube experience, so any like or subscription will help me a lot. And you can also share this video with your friends or colleagues. See you next time.